Hi, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. This is the Anatomy Channel. So uh, this video is going to be about uh, skin or the integumentary system. We're going to talk about uh, skin, then we'll do some of the accessory organs um, uh, and structures of skin in another video. So skin is composed of uh, a few different layers. Uh, it, it covers everything um, except for mucous membranes that's exposed to the outside world, mucous membranes lining your openings like the oral cavity, nasal cavity, covers your eyes, urethra, uh, vagina, anus. So anything open to the outside is covered by mucous membrane. Everything else is sealed off with your integumentary system. And it's, it, uh, it serves several functions. So your skin is going to be about uh, protection, right? It's going to protect you from uh, radiation. It's going to protect you from abrasion and mechanical damage. It's going to protect you from excessive heat, uh, all sorts of things. So protection. It's going to be about uh, regulation. Right. Your skin will regulate um, heat loss. It will um, regulate uh, different expressions and what can what can come in and out of your of your body, uh, except for the mucous membrane uh, portion. It'll be about uh, excretion. Your skin will um, lose a lot of water through the sweating process, and you can excrete some waste that way, or at the very least, uh, vent off some water. Uh, so we got protection, regulation, excretion. Your um, skin is going to contain sensory nerve endings and receptors that are going to bring information in from your environment. So you can talk about sensation. And then just to keep this kind of theme going, we'll talk about the formation of vitamin D. Right? So those are some of the, the functions that your skin will serve you. Protection, regulation of certain processes, excretion, mostly sweat, water. Uh, sensation, you have receptors and nerve endings in the skin and the formation of vitamin D. Right? So those are some of the functions uh, that your skin will, uh, will perform for you. And then we're going to talk about uh, layers of skin. You have the epidermis, the dermis, and the subdermis or subcutaneous uh, level. Okay, so think of... Um, Cutane and dermis or derm as the uh, Greek and Latin terms for skin. You can you get two terms that sound different. Subcutaneous and hypodermic uh, would be the same thing, uh, just one Greek, one Latin. So we're going to say epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, or I'll, I'll say subcutaneous because that tends to be a more familiar term when we're talking about the skin. So of these three layers, the subcutaneous layer or the hypodermic layer is the layer that would be where there's muscle fascia, then there's this fatty layer of uh, subcutaneous or hypodermic tissue where we store a lot of our, our fat uh, for insulation and shock absorption and just basically protection um, to cushion the skin under the muscles. Then you have the dermis, which is gonna account for about 80% of the thickness of the skin. Skin being the thickest on your back and the thinnest on your eyelid. Um, palms and the soles of your feet are pretty thick too, but uh, in the actual uh, thickness or depth of the dermis, you're talking sometimes up to five, six millimeters thick on the back of some individuals, um, and then as thin as half of a millimeter uh, in the, the eyelid. That's very thin skin. Okay? And then the epidermis is the uh, more active uh, layer that we think of as skin. When you get a scratch or a cut, even a, a fairly deep scratch typically only goes into the dermis, which is about... Uh, 15, 20% of the thickness of the skin, not including the subcutaneous fatty layer. That varies incredibly all over the body and between uh, men and women, um, young and old. There's a difference in subcutaneous fat layer. I've got um, a lot of subcutaneous fat stored in the abdominal area because I'm a man and the testosterone sensitive uh, adipocytes there. And uh, very little fat stored in the back uh, under the skin on the back of my hand, for instance. If I were female, I would store more subcutaneous uh, fat around my mammary glands in the breasts and around the hips and such. So subcutaneous layer, let's not worry about that right now. Um, talk about dermis, epidermis. Epidermis is the skin on the surface that is made up of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. So that's a, that's a mouthful. Just hit pause and rewind and listen to that. Stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. So there's keratin, which is a uh, protein, which is going to give kind of a hard, um, 
a thorny or not thorny, horny type substance to it. So your nails and hair are made of um, keratin. That's that protein it makes hairs and hair and nails. The epidermis are keratinized cells. Uh, they're they're sort of pancake shaped. There's where we get squamous. And they come in layers, stratified. So stratified, squamous, keratinized epithelium. Now this is what composes your dermis or your epidermis. The dermis is made up of irregular, irregular, dense connective tissue. Subcutaneous layer being uh, can form mostly of loose connective tissue. We'll come back to that. So the epidermis is made up of a few different layers. Uh, we're not going to go into them in this video. This is just to introduce you to skin and how it works. But you can think of the deeper layers of your skin as um, releasing some of the cells, these uh, stratified squamous uh, keratinized cells. And these cells will move from the lower epidermis at the junction of the dermis epidermis and they will migrate up to the surface of the dermis and as they do they will dry out or desiccate and they will become only uh, almost completely keratinized or just dead cell which eventually will uh, if you were to scratch your arm in the sunlight if your skin were dry you'd flake off a lot of those um, keratinized epithelial cells uh, as dry skin or dead skin those flakes from the bottom of the epidermal dermal layer, uh, when the mitosis occurs and these little squamous cells uh, completely keratin uh, keratinize and desiccate, float to the surface, takes about 30 days. So, um, but every month, one or two of these cells have moved from complete bottom all the way up, dried out, and been flaked off. This is where you hear things like people say, well, you have an entirely new set of skin every uh, year, every seven years, or whatever. Uh, it's not quite that simple, like most things in anatomy, but you do constantly regenerate your epidermal layer over the course of your lifetime. In some areas, uh, the keratinized cells stay um, a little longer, uh, and they become desiccated and dried out a little further down the process, so you get thicker, tougher skin, like on the sole of your hand, where you get cal uh, the palm of your hand, where you get... Um, these keratinized little humps called calluses because of a lot of mechanical action there as a self-protective um, mechanism. You get little ridges uh, or papillae of uh, epidermis, dermal papillae that keratinize and form little ridges like on your um, fingertips, making fingerprints, and they're unique to each person, um, more or less. Uh, same thing with the footprint and um, the keratinized uh, dermal papillae ridges there. The epidermis also is going to contain uh, melanocytes, which contain and uh, produce pigment, and they'll determine the um, uh, the hue or color of your skin. the The amount of uh, melanocytes determines the the uh, freckles or or dark skin or light skin or all the varieties. And the melanocytes will produce this pigment mainly in the protection role to help us either uh, protect us from too much ultraviolet radiate ultraviolet light uh, radiation from the sun or other sources with heavy pigmentation or um, allow more of that ultraviolet type B light through so we can produce or form the vitamin D. This is why you see uh, typically in human beings, darker skins closer to the equator where we have more direct sunlight, uh, we need more protective role. And as you move away from the equator, 45th parallel and higher, you see uh, lighter skin uh, to allow more UVB radiation through to the formation of vitamin D. Uh, that's about uh, all the function that uh, melanocytes form. So as the um, cells dry out or desiccate and move up forming this epidermal layer for protection and constantly regenerating because it gets scratched and, and bumped and it stretches and moves, you're going in as the melanocytes give us pigmentation to protect us or, or uh, provide just the right amount of UV radiation. The epidermis is uh, avascular, so it doesn't have any blood vessels in the epidermis. Um, it's got some at the epidermal dermal junction or layer, uh, which is why if you scratch through your epidermis, you'll get a little bit of weeping uh, blood, maybe a little bit of bleeding. It's when you cut down into the dermis that you actually get a little more bleeding. <clears throat> so the epidermal layer is avascular, but it does contain uh, sensory uh, receptors and some free nerve endings. Now the dermis itself is going to contain <clears throat> more nerve endings and um, uh, vasculature, more blood vessels, arteries and veins and such, and um, more, more sensory receptors. It's going to contain in that irregular dense connective tissue the uh, other accessory glands, the, the hair, um, the oil glands, um, sebaceous glands, and the, the sweat glands, the sudoriferous glands, 
and we'll do those in uh, integument part two. So it's just an overview of the skin layers. I will now um, jump to the next video, uh, like this one first, subscribe to the channel, share the channel, and then jump to integument part two. I'm going to do a little picture here so that you can see the uh, structures and we'll talk more about the, the dermis.